welcome back to the Colour Cave. It's Gem here. We're back in Dromenvanger for another colour and chat video. We're getting quite far on with this page now, so getting a little bit excited. I uh, did have plans for another video today, but I have been super busy with work and calving cows. So this seemed like a better option. And all I'm doing is swapping the videos over. So the video that I had planned for today, you will see on Thursday instead. So we're not missing out on anything. I wanted to carry on with our little birdie friend down here first and get him finished. And then start to work on some of these extra pieces. The, the sort of itty bitty bits because we're kind of getting to that stage now. The only really big things we have left are these bugs and the butterfly. Um, and as some of you know, I have been doing this page sit kind of like extracurricularly. Oh, that's a big word. Uh, so I'll maybe get on with a little bit of that later if I've got time later on this evening when I'm a little less busy. So just a quick reminder, there was two main sets of pencils I was using here for the purple sections and the blue sections on our bird. These are all the Arteza pencils and it is the 120 set, which is now the biggest set you can get. So the purpley colours were Ube, Royal Purple and Wine Red, which weirdly the Wine Red works quite well to get a sort of darker, shadowy, shady tone. And the blue set consisted of the Myconos Blue, Indigo and Peacock Blue as well. So we're going to stick with them for a little bit just now. And we're going to get down to business here. I'm a bit, not disorganised, that's the wrong word. I'm just kind of a bit spread out here, so tidy myself up a bit and we'll get zoomed in a wee bit more. Okay, that looks... Oh, that looks good there. Okay, let's go with that. So I'd started here on this wing and this was the ube. I don't know why I stopped like mid-section. That was a bit odd, but <laughs> anyway, we'll get back to that and we can get colouring. So this is just the base layer and I have to decide there is a light source coming from somewhere in oh, this sort of direction. So I have to be careful here about where I'm putting my colours because there's going to be a little bit of shadow under our little Nomi friend's bottom here. So we'll maybe pop that in there. And I would imagine there wouldn't be much else. So we'll just build up the two lighter colours. And we'll see if we can get a nice rich colour without it being too dark. That's kind of the aim of the game here. So I'll just work away with this ube. And we can see how we're going. So things are quite busy. I'm still working away on cataloguing my colouring pages for you all which are going to go over on the website. I have taken all the photographs and there are not as many colouring pages as I thought there would be aside from the ones for Enchanted Forest which will be going on at a later stage when I've actually finished the book. So the time seems to be in not to actually taking the photographs, that's the easy bit. Because my camera is in a fixed position I can just slide the book's you know, underneath the camera and click them and move on to the next one kind of thing. So that's been pretty easy, but I do have to put my, um, either like a watermark or the cave logo in the corner or something like that. And then I have to start uploading them and that's what's going to take the time. I do have a, a rural internet connection, aka a hillbilly internet connection, and it is very, very slow. So things like that take time, but I'm chipping away at that. So that's something that we can still kind of look forward to and we can explore that a little bit more obviously I'll let you all know when they start to go up and I am going to catalogue them by colouring book artist that would be I think from what you guys have said the feedback's been great so thank you for that that would be the best way to make it easy for you guys to find something that might inspire you okay so we've got these kind of little sections here so I think I'm going to make the middle of these sections this dark sort of purplish colour and then the, the sort of outer section I'm going to go with the blue and just see what that looks like. So I'm going to take the royal purple first and colour in all these little insidey bits. There's a nice technical phrase for you all today. I'll maybe pop that in there. And then just with this wine red I'm going to start to darken that down. I'm not pressing hard though because I don't want them to look more red than purple. We're just going to layer these pencils up to mix the colours and hopefully get quite a nice dark purple. So no, no pressure really. I would say medium pressure here just to do this kind of thing. And that gives you an even distribution 
of both colors. There we go. So other stuff in the cave, I am aware of where our subscriber count is at. So I am organizing the, uh, there is going to be a giveaway at 5,000 subscribers. So I'm busy dealing with that as well, making sure everything's in place so that we're ready. So that's quite exciting. And I'm quite looking forward to that because it's quite a big milestone in terms of being a, a, a smaller channel. You know, 5,000 subscribers is quite a big deal when you've got a small channel. So I want to welcome you all that are new and also thank you very much for just supporting the channel and getting some enjoyment out of the videos, hopefully. So I'm onto these blues now and I'm starting with the lightest one and I always do this, is just get one layer of this lighter shade down and I'm just mapping things out so that my brain can calculate where the colours are going to go on top. So the middle colour is the Mykonos blue which I really really like and I'm going to keep that at the sort of top edge of these feathers and leave the, the tips this paler colour. And when it comes to the ones that are sort of tucked in behind that's when I'm going to whip out the indigo and just sort of get some you know, so I can get look as like we've got this overlap. Now it is quite a small area, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend forever on this. But even just that little hint of an accent, now this is back to one of these things that although it doesn't seem like much when you're putting it down, it's just one of those little elements that kind of helps bring the whole thing together and adds that extra little bit of oomph oomph to the picture. So we'll pop that down there. Okay, that looks fairly, fairly good. There is a row of them along here, so I think I'm going to do the same there. I think that sounds like a good idea. So I'll go back and do these middle parts again. Mm. Oh, watch the foot. Uh, I kind of have to figure out what's going on in here. I think that might be a purple bit. Yeah, okay. I only have Wu with me today. Mr. Jem has taken the, the big dogs for a, a long walk and little Willy Wu isn't fit for that anymore because she's too old. So she's staying with me and we've been out in the garden and we've played with the ball, which she loves when the big dogs aren't around, you know, because she's got it all to herself and she's not going to get knocked out the way. So we've been playing out in the garden for a little while there, but she's tired now. She says she's fed up, she's had enough. So I thought I would uh, take that opportunity to start the video. There we go. It's looking... I'm trying to get it as close to this as possible and I think we're pretty close. So... I think I want a little bit more of this wine red. Pop this in here. There we go. So when I was taking photographs of all the colouring books, the um, the thing that struck me was that I, obviously I balance my time between colouring, drawing and painting. So I don't colour as much as I used to. And I came across quite a lot of books that I haven't touched for well over a year. And I kind of like started to get this little bit of a guilty feeling. I'm like, oh, I've abandoned this book. I really want to colour in that. So by the time I'd photographed everything, I basically wanted to colour in every book that I own. So I'm thinking that I might have to have a little um, colour-a-thon at some point and just spend like a whole day colouring different things in different books just so I feel like I've been in all the books. Okay, back to Indigo now. Uh, as and when I've got time for that, I don't know. As I said, I'm, I'm really busy with like my, my own, my proper job just now and it's not leaving me a lot of time to do other things, which it's just life, I'm afraid. It's just one of those things. But unfortunately, that's what brings the money in. Much as I enjoy and love having my YouTube channel, it doesn't pay the bills. So we have to keep working. <laughs> it's good though, I enjoy my job. Okay, so we've got some Ube here. Ube, Ube. And this royal purple. Now I'm just going to put a few kind of like gentle strokes in here. Try and fill in this top part and we're going to make this quite dark. So I'll put a stick a couple of layers down. There we go. 
and then I can go in with this wine red again. And I'll try and make this really dark under here because this is sitting over the top of the the wing feathers, if you like. This is like a shoulder feather. I'm sure it's got a proper name. I don't know what it is. And we'll pop this in here. The other thing I really want to do today after I've filmed this video is my acrylic painting of... Uh, it's kind of like a wave on a beach. That's been my first acrylic painting on canvas. And I'm getting to a stage where I think it's time to leave it alone. <laughs> so I'm planning on trying to finish that off today at some point as well. And I'll stick that over on Instagram for you if you want to to have a look at it when I'm finished. Uh, it's not... It's not a masterpiece. It was never going to be a masterpiece because I've never painted acrylic on canvas and my acrylic painting repertoire is very limited. So it was just really an experiment, but I'm I'm reasonably happy with it actually. And I've learned quite a lot from it. So, but I just feel I, every time I walk past it now, it's on the easel in the sunroom. And every time I walk past it, I'm kind of like, I'm sick of looking at it. Does that make sense? It's like, oh God, that paint's still sitting there. So I think it's time to finish it off. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to doing that and it's quite overcast today which is good because in the sunroom it can get quite warm for obvious reasons and what I'm finding is my acrylic paint is drying really quickly. I have found the, you can buy like um, a paint retarder and basically it slows down the drying process so that you've got longer to work with it before it, it starts to set and when you're working on a bigger piece like that you know on a canvas that I, I feel that I definitely need that time and I did mention that when we did the cave stash videos on the acrylic paint you know when we bought them originally with the cave stash I did mention the paint retarder because it was in the leaflet that came in the the sort of gift box of paints that we got so I'm going to try and get myself some because I am wanting to start some other they're, they're actually not canvases when I was raking about um, after we moved in I'm sure I told you the house wasn't in the best condition, but there was a lot of junk lying around that the the last owners had just left behind. So I sorted through it and I found these sheets of plywood that are kind of halfway between A4 and A3 size. And they're perfect for painting on. So I'm going to gesso some of them and I'd like to do some paintings on them. I might even try and do like a series of paintings. Of what I don't know yet, I haven't got that far, but that was just something that I really wanted to do. I'm also working on quite an exciting project, which I am not going to tell you about just yet because it is in its infancy, but it is something that you cavers will be I want to say participating in, maybe you won't want to participate in it, but it's something for for the cave and for the viewers so that's I think it's going to be a long way off though so I'm not going to say too much more than that but I have a little bit of work to do on that project as well so I'll maybe do some of that over the next few days if I can squeeze it in okay I think I'm quite happy with this wing situation I think I want to keep these purple as well I was going to do them blue but then they're going to kind of like blend in with this body and I don't want that and it means I can have this back section blue which will bring down all the way down into these tail feathers here. That's my logic. So we'll just pop this down first. Again, just this is the same thing, it's just the ube, there's nothing new here so... If you're following along, I don't think anybody is following along with this, nobody's mentioned if they are or not. I do have someone who actually went out and bought this colouring book though because the they're, they're, back up a bit Gem. the person in question is not a colourist they do not generally adult colour but they have watched me colouring in this for the last I don't know how many months and it has got to the point where they just want the book so bad so they went and bought it <laughs> so to you, you know who you are I hope you're enjoying yourself but um, yeah, have fun with the gnomes yeah, I don't think anyone's actually colouring along. If you are, or you're colouring the same page and you're just watching while you're colouring, you're, you know, doing your own thing, let me know in the comments. That would be really cool. I'm also quite interested to know when it comes to things like this, I know that I do them in sections and I, you know, I really stretch them out over a series of months and we go and colour things in between. Do any of you wait until I've completed the entire picture and then colour along with me and just watch the videos like one after the other? Is that a thing? I'm really curious about that 
because I kind of, when I first started and I did watch some, you know, like tutorial stroke full page type colourings, I was very impatient for the, the next instalment as it were and I used to wait, if it was something I wanted to colour and I had the book, I used to wait until it was complete um, and then just stick all the videos in a playlist and just watch them one after the other. So if anybody likes to do that, I would like to know as well, just out of curiosity, because all these things help me decide what videos I'm putting out when and also, you know, to decide what order to put the videos in. I don't think I would ever spend like an entire, like maybe three week stretch just putting out colouring videos, because obviously we do have quite a mixed audience of artists that like to find out about supplies people that are learning art and want to see what i'm doing and people that just like listening to me talk so i'm trying to balance all that out with the, the variety of the videos and i think for the most part i've got a relatively good balance um but i'm always curious to hear people's opinions so please feel free to drop a comment about that let me know that would be cool other than that, there's not a huge amount going on. I am really tired just now and I, I actually don't know why. Um, I was saying to some of my friends over the last few days, I just seem to be tired all the time just now. And normally I am a morning person. I, I love getting up early and getting loads of stuff done early on in the day because then I feel as if I've accomplished something and the rest of the day is my own. And for the last maybe four weeks or so, I'm struggling to get out of bed. Like I just, I have to drag myself out of bed and it's really out of character for me. And even now sitting here, I slept really well last night and I actually had a bit of a lie in this morning and I still feel knackered, like proper, proper knackered. So I don't know what's going on there, but I'm hoping that it'll pass because I don't like feeling like this and I don't like not wanting to get up in the morning. Right. Okay. I think that's looking okay. I was just kind of, I kept going back to that wine red pencil there because I just wanted to get a bit of definition between each of these feathers and I think I've managed okay. I have a feeling that this section in here that goes down to the tail feathers is going to be quite dark. So I think I'm going to start with the Myconos blue and then just work in indigo over the top of it because this seems to be tucked in behind an awful lot of things here. You know, there's quite a few things that are coming out in front of it, so we'll maybe keep it a little bit darker. I'll grab my indigo. I'll just work away in tiny little strokes here so that I can add up, uh, you know, sort of add in and build up the colour, the darker colour as I go. So this is a kind of like delicate, slowly, slowly catchy monkey type process here. I also realised as well that I was looking through like our past colouring videos and I was just kind of having a browse through because there's a couple that have cropped up that are older videos that have been getting quite a lot of views. And I realised it was because um, Colouring Heaven magazine have a, a Facebook page and the issue that's out just now is Colin Thompson. And they actually mentioned me in one of my videos that I did, one of my colouring chats in Colin Thompson's book, uh, which was amazing. I was I was really pleased with that. So that that video obviously got a kind of like a little bit of a boost. And um, it, it's been a relatively quiet video because it is an older video now. So that was really nice. But the, it still never ceases to amaze me. Two videos that keep cropping up in my rankings because on your YouTube dashboard it tells you what your best performing videos are like over a like a 48 hour period or whatever. And the two that keep cropping up, and again they're really old videos, are uh, the videos on the gelatos. Everyone doesn't seem to know what to do with them. So that seems to be a really popular video. And also a quick tutorial video I did on how to draw and colour in clouds, you know, to add into like a background in one of your colouring books or just for your drawing. And that video seems to do consistently well as well. But it, cro it only crops up every now and then, so it must be the way that YouTube are recommending things, but I just think it's quite funny. Because I look back on those videos now, maybe not so much the Colin Thompson one, but definitely the Clouds video, and I think, goodness me, I've come a long way. I don't cringe when I watch it or anything, but it's you can tell it's an old video and that my YouTubing skills have come on considerably since then. But it's quite nice to look back on things like that, though, and be you know still be proud of it. So yeah, that's it. That's been quite interesting as well. I'm not doing these tail feathers in any sort of order. I'm just kind of like adding in strokes of colour. I am generally trying to keep the tips a bit lighter though. 
but I just want to add in a little bit here and there. I quite like this peacock blue, it's quite a nice colour. Our little birdie friend is looking quite fine, quite fine. The next thing I want to do is take a look at the greys because I want to colour in these paving stones down here. And with the addition of the newer colours in the Arteza set, we've got quite a lot of greys to choose from. So if I just come into my swatch book here and show you here, we have all these kinds of greys right through from a really pale fog grey to more or less you know, black. So that's quite interesting. So I want to get a nice mix of different greys that are going to kind of complement each other. One of the colours I really want to use is sage because it's almost green. But I thought if we maybe had a mixture of this sage colour and the pewter and then we could pick a much darker grey, perhaps this charcoal colour as well because it's got a kind of hint of bluey green in it as well. So those three might work. And then maybe mushroom. So let's go, or maybe mushroom's going to be too pale. Let's go stone. So we'll go stone, pewter, sage and charcoal. I'll dig these pencils out. Okay, I'm just missing stone. It must, it must be, I must be over the road. <laughs> yeah, it is. So just before I do something like this, because I am going to use these pencils randomly to give the stones a, a stony look, oh my goodness. Um, one thing I do like to do is just test them out a little bit on a scrap of paper. So if I just, um, I'll do them from lightest to darkest. Or what, what is closest from lightest to darkest. I think maybe the sage might be. Yeah, because this is going to give these stones like an almost like kind of mossy feel to them. So I think we'll go with these three will be the main colours that I use. And then the sage I can just add in in little patches. I'm also going to use the charcoal to darken around some of the edges of these stones to make them look as if they're kind of like set into the dirt. So we want a, quite a sharp pencil for that, but we'll deal with that after. We'll just colour some of this, the stones in just now and we can go from there. So I think the first thing that we should do is always, I'm just going to take this stone grey and I'm just going to pop down a little layer of that, just a really light layer on all these stones, like so. I'll do the big paving stones first and then I'll maybe pick up some of these pebbles afterwards. Now I'm aware you will hardly be able to see that, but that's okay, we'll get we'll get there. <laughs> I'm actually quite excited to get this finished now. You know, we're getting to that point where we can start to see it really coming together. So I'm I'm keen to get on and get this this finished off and maybe move on to something else. Start one of our other gifted colouring books that we have been given in the cave, excuse me, while I have a drink. Okay, so I'll take one of the whole stones first because if I start over here, then I'm in behind this bird and all sorts. So I'm going to take one of these larger ones first just so that I can kind of figure out what I want them to look like and what they are going to look like when I start putting the pencil down. So I'm going to take this one in the middle and I'm going to pay attention to these lines, you know, the little dotted lines that have been left here. So I'll maybe start there. And I'm going in little circular motions to begin with. And I'll maybe put a darker edge along. Now, bearing in mind, again, that the light source is coming from somewhere, like, over here. So I'm kind of thinking about that as well and thinking where the light may or may not be hitting. And I would imagine with these being sort of paving stones that they will be quite smooth. I don't suppose they'll be particularly lumpy-bumpy or knobbly-bobbly. So we might have a little bit here and there. So I'm just going to add in almost like kind of like spidery lines or cracks. And I'm just doing that at random with this slightly darker pencil. And then I've got the sage here. And if I just use that in a circular motion. Just round this edge here. So it's given that a kind of like a, like a green tint. And I don't want that all over, I don't think. And I'm just going to kind of soften this and bring it back together with the stone. So I'm going to go over everything I've done. But again, medium pressure. I'm not pressing hard. We don't want to be pressing hard at this stage because we're not finished. Okay, well, that looks like a stone to me. And then I can take this charcoal 
and just very lightly because it is a, a fair bit darker. Maybe just accentuate some areas where uh, maybe I've popped in these, these slightly darker lines. The great thing about doing stuff like this is you've got an area to work in. You know, you've got quite a nice surface area so you're not in all these kind of teeny tiny bits and there's no right or wrong way to do this this is just a case of preference and maybe you know fooling about a little bit until you get something that you like and it doesn't matter if the first two aren't exactly what you had in mind because that's just going to help with the you know making sure that they are they're all slightly different now i'm quite happy with that so i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with that and i'll i'll go over to this side now again being left-handed i should really be working right to left so we'll start with this one that kind of goes over the page. All my pencils are rolling about today. I don't know what's with that. My, my desk is pretty level. Uh, I made sure of that when I moved things about. Oh, that's the other thing. I was planning on doing a, a cave tour now that I've moved everything around in the room. I wasn't happy with the setup that I had. And I can't remember if I've talked about this before. I think I might have mentioned it before. I just wasn't, the room wasn't working well for me, so I moved everything round and I was going to do a cave tour once I'd reorganised all these bits and pieces, but, but I actually need uh, an extra bit of, uh, I want to say windowsill, this desk where I film is at the window and I have a massive gap behind the desk where everything kind of falls down. Our joiner is going to be coming back probably in the next four or five weeks to start pulling our kitchen to bits because we have uh, decided we're getting a new kitchen. So he's going to do that for me when he's here. So I'm going to wait till that's done and the this desk itself is set up properly before I do that cave tour. So it's going to be it's going to be a lot further away. I think realistically it's going to be into into September, but I promise you you will get. You will get another cave tour and you can see where I've got everything. It's taken me so long to decide where I want things because this setup is quite different to in the old cave because number one, I have more space, but I also don't have any of my bookcases in here. We have enough space in this house. This house is, is, is a lot bigger than our old house and I actually have like a separate room where... It's not a library, there are other things in the room too, but I've got a separate room where I can store my books. So that gave me a lot more space to play about with here, but I also have a lot more art supplies than I used to have as well when we first started the cave. So I kind of needed that storage anyway, because in the old house, everything was spilling out into the, the cupboard in the, in the hall just outside the cave door. So it's taken me a little while to sort of get everything in a place where it makes sense to me and, you know, where it's you know I can find things because there are still some things and I think yeah where did I put that and for someone that's quite organized that's very frustrating but I feel as if I've got it right now and I'm still I still do my proper job from here as well you know it is still a, an office for me but everything's very segregated now and I don't have to share desk space between my work and the cave which is really nice I have separate desks for for each of these things Mr. Gem did warn me though, because the painting easel is in the sunroom, he says that's the only thing that I'm allowed in the sunroom <laughs> when the cave is full up of art supplies and I've got no more room. I'm not allowed to branch out into anywhere else in the house. We ha He says you have to start throwing things out. I was like indignant, I will not throw things out. Nothing will be getting thrown out. I will give them to my cavers. And he just rolled his eyes at me, so I took that as a okay. <laughs> it's quite funny. So we thought we were getting on okay renovating this house um, and everything was going reasonably well. We are now waiting for workmen to come and do certain things and because of the COVID situation, a lot of them haven't been working through it for obvious reasons. So they have a backlog of customers from before the outbreak started. So the waiting times to get things done are... A considerable so we're kind of we're not stuck but we we just have to wait now but everything's okay like because we got the kind of structural stuff sorted and you know did all that bit and spent all the money everything was everything was going great and we're, we're still not still still not done <laughs> mama Jem was here last week because papa Jem comes up and helps mr Jem for 
a little while to like with mechanical stuff because my dad is uh, well he was a time serve mechanic in his youth and he likes tinkering with tractors and things so he's kind of like the, the mr fix it for the machinery and um mama Gem always helps out in the house especially now that she's a lot better on her knee she had a knee replacement just before the lockdown started. So she's she's not, I wouldn't say she's back to normal, but she's doing really well. But she's doing a lot of housework and things when she is here, just to lighten the load for me, which is just amazing. Like my mum's my amazing. And uh, she she was in one of the cupboards in the hall to get out our vacuum cleaner. And it's, it's an old heavy Dyson we've got, um, which is um, I'm surprised it's still going to be perfectly honest but I'm kind of attached to it so she leant into the cupboard to pull the Dyson out and she leant on the wall beside the cupboard and a massive chunk of plaster just disintegrated under her hand and crumbled to the floor and left this massive hole in the wall and she came running through panic and she's like I hardly touched it I was only leaning on it gently and it just all fell away from the wall it was quite funny though because it looks as if she's punched a hole in the wall and the plaster is just, it's damp and we can't figure out where it's come from because the rest of that wall is dry. It's an interior wall, it's not an exterior wall. So we're like, oh, here we go again. So that's the next thing. The the, the poor chap that came and lick, fixed the leak in the sunroom, he's a roofer and a plasterer. So we're having to phone him to come back out and he was only here like a week and a half ago. Um, to see if he'll come and look at this wall and try and put it back together. It's like, oh, it's never ending in this house. It's never ending. But, yeah, okay. So we've started calling it the Indiana Jones house because there there is a, a significant chance that if you walk through it, something might fall from somewhere and land on your head. You know, big boulders might roll down the corridors after you. <laughs> Bits of the house that are falling down. But we'll get there. It's going to be a very, very slow process. Very slow process. But even if it takes us three years, that's fine. That's okay. I don't mind. We'll get there. We'll be okay. <laughs> so there we go. That's it. The piece is shattered. Mr. Jem's back with the dogs. So I now have everyone in the cave bar, Mr. Jem, who is away working on a little project for one of our room renovations. So anyway, back to what I was doing. I've kind of lost my lost my thread a wee bit here. Pewter. <laughs> I think I could do with a wee sharpen as well. What's that time? There we go. That's better. Oh, that's the wrong pencil also. Pewter. There we go. Just get some edges in. I don't know why that I know like I've said that I've been really tired and stuff, but just the last week or so I've had loads of ideas for artworks and videos. I've been really inspired, although I don't seem to have a lot of energy. I seem to have uh, been making up for that with all these ideas that are swimming around in my head, which I find kind of weird, but kind of cool at the same time. So I'm just making sure that I'm writing them all down so that when I do have time, I can execute those <laughs> those ideas to the best of my ability. I never seem to be short of ideas. That's one thing I will say. I always have lots of ideas, but I don't necessarily want to execute them. You know, I think with some things I have to be in the mood for them. And I'm sure everyone's the same. And I get it with colouring pages a lot. I ha sometimes I have to be in a, a certain frame of mind to colour something from a particular artist like you've definitely got to be in the mood for a Kirby page <laughs> if your heart's not in that one then you're on a hide into nothing I think okay I think my stones are looking fairly fairly good I'm quite happy with this uh, this little sort of technique I've got on the go here which is good that's always good when things like that work out I'm not I'm not putting too much thought into it though I'm just kind of just kind of like meandering the pencils over the over the paper and just kind of see what happens. But this is working out quite well. What I do find is when I experiment with things like this and try and work out what I'm doing, I tend to get faster as I go along. Like once I've figured out what I'm actually doing, it makes things uh, a little bit easier. So <laughs> I feel as if I'm kind of at that stage with this now. See, I'm not really putting any pressure on the pencils an awful lot. And that makes them easier to blend in as well because I don't really want any sort of like really harsh lines. 
I just want to give that impression that they're, you know, they're not like manufactured sort of smooth paving stones. But that they've maybe been worn down smooth over a lot of years by our little gnomey friends going back and forth with their birds and their wheelbarrows and one thing and another. Here's Pip tearing round. <laughs> she's literally been for a five mile walk and she's still wanting to play with tennis balls and... Oh, God. <laughs> I always say the same thing though, you can walk a collie for miles and it won't wear them out. You need to run them. If you want to tire them out, you need to run them. Until they get old, obviously. Once they're a bit sort of past that middle age stage, you can walk them and they're quite happy with that. But for a dog of Pip's age, now bear in mind she's not quite two yet. Yeah, she's just like, she's a little Duracell bunny. She just keeps going and going and going. Okay, these are coming along quite nicely now. I'll just keep going here, adding some bits and bobs in. Got some sage. Oh, great debates about nails and tacks there, so that's me. I've just shut everybody out now. I want, I want peace to colour. It is nice having Mr. Gem floating about the house because I don't see an awful lot of him, but when you're trying to do stuff like this, obviously we want quiet. So that there's no distractions. I'm debating whether or not to do this one in here and I think it might be nice to have it considerably darker. You know, so maybe it's not exactly the same stone that's been used. So I'm popping down a layer of this pewter over the top and then I'm going to use the charcoal. I'll make this a lot darker in at the in at the window edge. Oh, I've got a broken leg again. Oh no. Oh no. Try and rescue this. And then that might be considerably mossier. And then again, I'll just use this palest colour and I'm really just using this to blend it out. I'm not really wanting to add much more to that. Yeah, so it kind of looks like it belongs to these ones, but it's not exactly the same. Then we'll head back over here. We've got these kind of itty bitty ones to do now. I'm getting really annoyed with the weather just now in Scotland. It's not July weather at all. Uh, the days are really changeable. It's not particularly warm and every now and then it just keeps threatening to rain. And I just get really fed up with it. Like I wish it would make its mind up. If it wants to be wet, that's fine. I have no issues with that. We're very, very used to that in Scotland. But I just wish it would either decide whether it's going to be a wet day or a dry day. <laughs> it's one of those ones where I keep like hanging my head outside and looking at the clouds in the sky and thinking to myself, did I try and hang some washing out on the washing line or am I completely wasting my time and my energy in doing so? And I, I've just resorted to hanging things up inside because I know what will happen if I don't then it doesn't rain, that's fine. And when I do hang my washing outside, it always ends up raining. So I've kind of given up with that, to be honest. But I just wish it would make up its mind. And we can't, last year, we, we, we have like a running total for barbecue season. And our record is seven barbecues in one summer period. And so far this year, we've had one. <laughs> it's just not not been weather for it but where we are now we've noticed it's a lot windier and that obviously has an impact on barbecuing quite considerably so we've passed up a couple of opportunities not because it's been raining but because it's been really windy so but we're, we're not done with the summer yet but i'm not not optimistic not optimistic at all because mr gem and i do like a good barbecue we do like a good barbecue. Okay, right, so I was talking about the these stones earlier on and getting them to look as if they're kind of like squished into the, into the soil a little bit. So just to give you a demonstration of what I mean by that, obviously I'm gonna do it on this side because this is the side that we can see. Um, and I'm just gonna run this charcoal pencil right round this area. 
you know, next to the line work for the actual stones themselves. And I've kind of accentuated that already with the, when I was doing the pencil for the ground. But I just want to kind of bring that out a little bit. And it's just to help sort of take away that kind of flatness of the fact that it's an image on the paper. And you can I mean you can bring them out a lot further than this. And the further out you bring this dark line, the more the more sort of like sunk in they're gonna look. Um and you can just sort of feather out those edges there. You know, it makes them look as if they've been maybe there for quite a long time. And you don't have to be too careful about this either. I have missed a bit of the ground in there, I'm gonna have to go back and fix that. As well, by keeping this dark round here, that's going to help our little friend's beard pop out a little bit more because I'm going to keep those white. Um, I might add like a tint of colour to them, but it's not. they're not going to have like pink and purple beards or anything. Maybe one of them should have a pink and purple beard. Maybe there's a, a rebellious gnome. Uh, maybe he likes to dye his beard just to be different, to stand out. <laughs> okay, I'm quite happy with that. With these little pebbles, what I want to do is I'm going to pair these colours up. So just the same ones that I've been using for these flat stones, but I'm just going to group them in two lots of two. So I'm going to put the, the darkest one with um, the... Blah, blah, blah. Come on, Gem. I'm going to put the charcoal with the sage and I'm going to keep the pewter and the stone together. And... Again, I just feel like I want this to sort of tie together because it is a really busy picture. I don't want there to be, you know, loads and loads of stuff going on. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to jump between these two sets of two pencils and just pick out some of these pebbles and colour them in. And it's really just to make it so that it's still interesting but without really without really drawing too much attention to it because they are like a really minor feature of of the actual piece itself. I know it's part all part and parcel of it, but they are um, a very minor detail. So I'm just gonna kind of pick these out as I go. We've got these ones that are kind of in the background area as well, and I'm gonna do the same with them. I'll just pick a couple out here with these two pencils. And again, not taking any time to get any sort of grand designs or anything like that, because that's not really what this is about. I don't know if this is a stone here. I think it is. So, well, I'm going to make it a stone if it's, if it's not now. It is now. If it wasn't before, it is now. That's what I meant to say. And we'll just pop this stone colour in on the top. I do this quite a lot in Johanna Basford's books. She likes to draw these tiny little round stones and there's loads of them crammed together. And I quite often do that with the French greys. You know, I just kind of like pair them up uh, to make sure that there aren't two mid-tones that are paired together. But I just kind of pair them up at random and then use them to sort of work my way across. And it, it's quite a nice little effect, I think. I wonder what this is. This might be the bottom of this toadstool, if that kind of comes at an angle. Yep, that makes sense. Okay, happy with that. Just check it. <laughs> you can never be too sure. Get these all filled in now. I think I'll do this big one. Yeah. All these teeny weeny ones. I kind of wish that I had the patience to draw something with this much going on. I, I am a person that likes detail, but I would say that when it comes to my drawing style, I, have, I prefer simpler images. You know, I would, I would rather focus on one subject with a lot of detail in it rather than like a big busy sort of picture. But that that's just me. But I do enjoy these kind of pictures. Obviously, I like to colour in Kirby Rosanna's books and he's all about this kind of thing. And also Colin Thompson as well, which I was talking about earlier. Um, so yeah, I, I do have a fondness for these, but just not for me to draw myself. Right, I'm going to switch to the other one now. And as this is just exactly the same process and obviously picking out the, the stones that we didn't do last time. So this little one in here. There we go, this is looking better. The other thing I've done over the last few days as well is I've finally unpacked the rest of my books. I had about 
a dozen boxes of books that were in a kitchen cupboard. There's like a cupboard built into the wall. And uh, I think it's supposed to be like a pantry cupboard, but we've actually got one that's, you know, in, built into the kitchen unit. So it's been kind of redundant. And I just stuck all my boxes of books in there until such times as we had one of the rooms organised upstairs. And now that that room is organised, I took the time to unpack them all. One of my favourite things to do is like reorganise my books. I take great pleasure in that and I can just sit cross-legged on the floor and restack them. So I just, to, the boxes weren't in when any sort of order. They kind of got jumbled about in the move. So I um, just... Un I literally just took them out of the boxes and put them all onto the shelf. So that's a, a relaxing little exercise for me. Again, when I've got a bit more time, I can go up to that room and just like meander my way through them and put them all in a sensible order. So Mama Jem was really happy that I'd unpacked them as well because she's a big reader and she <laughs> she used to bring books with her when she came to stay and she's just stopped doing it now because she knows I've always got something that will interest her or something that she might want to read. So we do have the the room that she stays in. Mama Jem comes quite often and she, she, well, she doesn't usually come by herself but she tends to come up on her own and it's just really to give her a break. She spends a lot of time looking after my grandmother who's 97 and she's very fit and well for 97 but she still needs a little bit of looking after and my mum goes two days a week and does shopping for her and you know takes her dinner and things like that so she likes to get a, like take a break from that so she comes up to visit so my mum basically has a room and we just call, it's the spare bedroom but we call it her room because she's the person that's in it most often and we've let her decorate it the way that she would want it decorated and m my mum has quite neutral taste she's like me when it comes to decor she doesn't like you know like big bold prints and things like that so it is a very neutral room and one of the things we did was put a bookcase in her room so she, the next time she comes up she's going to sit and go through all the big bookcases and pick out things that she wants to read and she's going to put them on her little bookshelf in her room. So that, that's made her happy too, which is kind of cool. Right, okay, that's us. We're all done with our stones, guys. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I think we're getting quite tight time-wise here. So that's it. That's looking as if we've pushed it on a little bit again. I was hoping to get a wee bit more done, but I think realistically we've maybe got another two or three videos in this to get everything finished. I think for now, though, just at this precise moment, I'm going to carry on over here and do the rest of the stones down this bottom part. I think that would be quite a nice idea while I'm sat here anyway, before I have to go and attend to my other duties. So I'll just take a little bit more of a zoom out. There we go, that's better. And uh, yeah, I'm, this is just, this is delightful. I haven't really coloured anything quite like this before. And I have to say, I'm really enjoying myself. And I'm so glad that Judy sent me this book. So once again, Judy, thank you very much. It's much appreciated. If you've lasted this far into the video, could you take a moment, please, to give it a thumbs up? Because you have obviously enjoyed yourself because you're still listening. And I want you all to take care of yourselves, look after each other, and we'll see you back in the cave on Thursday for another video. Have a good day, everyone. Bye for now.